I'm Michelle Sweeney and I am today going to talk about the second page of the Mozart Rondo Allegro from 12 Little Pieces for Piano. This is part of the repertoire in Suzuki Book 2, although this is a different version, so you'll notice a couple of small differences in some of the notes. Anyway, um, I want to teach you a little bit of music theory today, and we are going to talk about how to really make this feel final. So we are going to talk about something called a cadence, and we are going to talk about how to make cadences sound like they are arriving at home. So, in music theory, at the end of every song, almost, that's ever written by any composer, old music, new music, modern music, it's all, it's all got something called a cadence at the end. Now let me play a couple of the cadence that are, cadences that are in this song and see if you recognize the sound. I'm gonna call the sound the end, okay? That's one cadence. We call that one a perfect, authentic cadence. It's a cadence that ends in the whole key. So we're arriving at the end, and just before we have the end, we have this that resolves to the home key, to the the home the the key the very the note that the song is based on is called the tonic, and this is the tonic chord at the very end of the song. We're going to have a cadence that has this. It's called the dominant. we have in a, in a cadence and the second page of this Mozart of Rondo Allegro it's just one big fat cadence all throughout we have perfect authentic cadences and then we also have something called a half cadence and a half cadence is kind of the opposite so we're going in this direction with a perfect authentic cadence we're going home with a half cadence you're resting on that dominant chord, okay? So it's a cadence that arrives. It arrives onto this dominant chord. Um, so we have a couple of those. We have here. That's called a half cadence. So it's going from the tonic chord kind of rests there. There's another one. So we're going from the one to the five, or from the tonic to the dominant, and that is called a half cadence. So in this last page of the Mozart, we have all of these, the end, the end, the end. We have a couple of question marks with the half cadence, and then we have some final exclamation points with the um, the end final cadence. So let me just sing along with this and help you understand what cadences do. So we're, we're going to finish this song and we don't know if it's over yet or if it's going to keep going, but you, th you keep thinking you're hearing the end, the end. So let's listen to this. The end, the end, the end, the end. Not quite. The end, the end, the end. Maybe that's no okay so we keep going he's just playing with us you know he keeps ending the song and then going a little more ending the song going a little more and this is the joy of Mozart um, Rossini does this too um, but it's really really fun so understanding the harmony will help you know how to push through the music when we don't really push towards the cadences we get a really stagnant kind of sound we get chords that just sound like a bunch of choppy chords that are one right after the other and I'll demonstrate that if you aren't pushing towards the cadences with your direction of your phrasing, your dynamics kind of crescendoing to where you're going to land in a half cadence, 
or tapering off of a half cadence into a full cadence, that sort of thing is really subtle. But if you don't do it, you end up with kind of this robotic me mechanical, like um, unsophisticated sound that kind of sounds amateur. So if you want to learn how to be sophisticated, you need to learn about cadences and how to sort of push into them. All right. So I will just demonstrate for you what it kind of would sound like um, without giving any direction towards the cadence. with the right rhythms and um, it was musically accurate. So the thing that I like to do in piano lessons is take music that's played correctly and turn it into something better by teaching you how to play the piano, teaching you how to understand music theory and just bringing it into a higher level of musicianship by understanding things like direction and cadences. So how do we make it feel like is this the end yet? Is this the end yet? Is this the end? Oh, this is finally the end, yay! Like, how do we give it that excitement? How do we give it that direction? Hmm, what exactly do we do? You might notice sometimes that like concert pianists, people like me, we like, we lean back and forth and we get all dramatic. And it may just look like stage, presence or something kind of theatrical, but actually there is something to it. What I am doing is I am physically leaning the weight of my upper body, my shoulders, my back, all the way from my hips, all of this body weight. I'm like, I'm falling into the piano keys when I get to the cadence. I'm actually putting my arm weight, my back weight, like all of my body weight from my hips on up, I'm putting that weight into this chord. I'm like, I'm falling into it. And it might look super graceful and it might just look like I'm being like fancy or something, but there's actually purpose to leaning into the piano. It's not just for show. It has a physical purpose. I leaned into that half cadence because I wanted to arrive there. I wanted to accent it in a way that's not like a not just a forte, it's like, it's got, it's got a little more depth in the bottom when you put your arm and your body weight into it. So moving forward into that cadence. So you put your body weight into those cadences when you arrive on them. So this first half cadence. And after that, you have to like float away from it. And that's where the magic is. So I'm really leaning into this one. That one is like, it's, it's like kind of echoing off in the distance from that. It, it's not even in the same place. It's like you've got one one big chord here, and then this one is happening like over there. Right, it's like so far away. So you have this push to the half cadence, and then from there, you have to, you have to like taper off from it, okay? changing any of the speed. I've got to keep the same tempo, but I'm making it feel less important. I'm making it feel 
restful. So from the top again. Okay, so that's how you add direction and movement in your cadences and you really need to know where the cadences arrive. You have your half cadence that's big and you lean into it and then you have your perfect authentic cadence that is small and you kind of lean away from it and that's kind of the contrast that will give this um, its refined beauty okay so from there then we we think we're done right I mean this is a perfect authentic cadence that could be the end of a song and we would be fine but Mozart wrote this little tag, it's called a coda. Coda literally means tail in Italian, like the tail of a dog is a coda. Anyway, so here's our little tail, our little tag, our little ending. Isn't that cute? It's little, it's, but you want it to have a little bit of um, crispness and sparkle. You don't want it to trail off like mushy and without any, any um, energy underneath it. So, um, like this, let's see. Okay, so we lean into the top. Oh, what do you know? That's a dominant chord. So, we're leaning into this one. Start leaning in. And when you arrive, you're kind of back away from that. And then the next part is exactly the same thing with a little ornamentation. I like to do that one a little bit like lighter than the one before. Maybe because it, maybe because it has those little wiggles in it, the little trills. Uh, maybe because it's a second one, so I'm thinking of like an echo. But you want to think about these things. When you have something that's repeat, rep, repetitive, when it's doing the exact same thing twice, do you want them to be exactly the same? That's a choice you have to make. Do you want one to be bigger than the other? Do you want them to um, build on each other? Do you want them to taper off from each other? And you have to sort of think about that, or do you... Do you have some reason to do one or the other? You, ha you have to think about that musically. Okay. So those are those two little tiny codas, the little tag thing. And then we have some bigger chords to end it off. So. Okay, that big finish. It has to be big. I mean, we can't just... We can't just play this like a robot. You've got to give it some direction. You've got to show us where we're going. And where we're going is right here. Right here. We're going to this dominant chord. And then, like, arriving at home on the tonic, it's really important that you make that the arrival point. So, there's also this one note here. You're going to arrive up high, and then you're going to come down again, and then you'll come back up high again. So, let me show you that. So we've arrived. That's, that's a big one. Okay, so that's a one five one. Tonic, dominant tonic. You need to arrive here. And then this needs to be like little. Um, it's crisp, staccato, and less than this. So this is big. This is little. It's just, it's like kind of um, just re-articulating the chord, um, like you're changing the bow with a violin or something like that, but you're not accenting any of these. Okay, this is the big one, and the rest of them are little, and then we go, so this one's, but you're going to lean into this one, and then you're going to kind of so that you can kind of come up with a nice big finish with your, your fingers as you end. You've got some rests 
immediately after. So you can't hold this one down. You need to let it come up. So as you press it, you're giving us the ending with your wrist coming up off of the piano. So whew, I feel like I just threw a lot of stuff at you. Um, I hope that was helpful to explain a little bit more about music theory, understanding the cadences and how you're arriving at the cadences and how you're articulating each of the notes within a consistent tempo will really help to make this last page of the Mozart Rondo Allegro sound amazing, like you know what you're doing as a classical pianist. Mozart is so, so, so easy and hard at the same time. The notes are easy to get. It's, it's pretty easy to play Mozart. Even, even some of the advanced Mozart, like the concertos and the sonatas, they're not that hard to play the notes. What's hard is this sort of stuff. The direction, the articulation, the cadences, um, knowing what should be loud and what should be soft, um, keeping all of that within a strict, very strict rhythmic tempo but having the shape and the, the push and pull of dynamics and things like that, all of that, that's the subtlety of Mozart. And that's what makes you oh, a musician that can make people weep is when you can play Mozart with that kind of control and beauty. So I hope that gave you a little bit to think about and work on. Um, again, I'm Michelle Sweeney and thanks for joining me for a piano lesson today. I hope you like and subscribe and, you know, ask me questions, comments, um, requests for songs that you'd like a lesson on, um, questions about specific fingerings or anything you'd like help with. I want to be your piano teacher. So just ask. Bye.